understanding how you were using reality because ah. often reality seems so subjective except for our own sense of reality. Uh -huh. So I was just wondering if you could um, maybe elaborate because you were talking about, you know, we have to sort of strip down to the reality. Right. But, yeah. I well, that's the point. Please. You see, reality, we all mean by reality the opposite of unreality or falsity, right? Sometimes you can equate reality with truth and unreality with falsehood or illusion, right? I mean, that's just the meaning of the word, that as we use it. So while people tend to create their own reality, we say, we also feel there's something, like when you have someone else who's imposing their reality on you, you think, you don't say, well, you should accept my reality to them. You say, well, there is a reality here, isn't it? I mean, let's be realistic. And you mean something that you both strive toward getting out of each of your own box. So, and a scientist, when they say reality, you know, the grand unified theory of reality, the theory of relativity explains this, Newton explains certain things that work out, quantum says you can't know for sure, it's probability only, you know, etc. We still, all everyone is working toward a basic idea that, that the real is that which remains reliable, which is not constructed by someone only, is a uh, holds for everyone, etc. You know, if they would know it, and uh, that's what is really the underlying space of the universe, something like that, or nature of the universe. That we do mean that, right? Now, that the the notion that it can be subjectivized in a way, we're talking about the distortion of that reality. We know, we know because what we mean by it is the opposite of unreality, right? So that's it. But there you go. <laughs> now, people of modern times get into this idea, maybe there is no such thing as any reality. And maybe that's true. That's what the critical-minded person gets into, you know, the whole idea of sort of post-critical, post-modern, post-postmodern, all this kind of thing, deconstruction and all that. It's the idea that there's, there is no such thing as any reality, you know? And in a way, that's possibly true in another way. That's true. But uh, uh, that, in, a, in a way, that agrees with the Buddhist insight, actually. Buddhist insight is that if we understand reality, and then when we discover that reality is freedom, emptiness, voidness, rather than emptiness, shunyata, something opening up, you know, when we discover that, then we realize that the relation, a relational being will always be constructing a narrative that will be a way of negotiating their relational thing, and that that reality will only be a relational one, and will therefore interact with other kinds of realities. And so, ultimate reality becomes a space of multiple realities, actually, it could be the discovery, and therefore the creation of a positive reality becomes an ta artistic task. And that is indeed the way the Buddhists view reality. That when they say ultimate reality is freedom, it's free from itself. It's not a state apart from relational reality. By non-duly non being the nature of relative reality, that makes room for many different realities. So I think your, your denseness is, a, is, a, is a, what you're perceiving as your denseness. Maybe you're resisting the idea that there should be an underlying reality which is going to swallow up all these subjective realities and it's going to be one thing and of course, we're all nervous that someone else is going to own it, <laughs> and not us. But that's uh, but freedom. Nobody owns freedom, and that's why everybody can enjoy it. It's a negational thing, and it negates itself ultimately. That's why it becomes non-dual, and we have to go on with that. At the moment, though, our problem that we're trying to discover that we have as a problem, unless we already don't, someone might be enlightened. But the problem of the ordinary person is that my reality, I absolutize it. And then it does conflict with other people's reality and the world's reality. It doesn't jive with it, because it's mine. And then that makes me unhappy when the world doesn't accept my reality. 
if my if I was aware really viscerally that my reality is only relational, then I would feel that any kind of reflection from others' realities that gave the challenged in a way some view of reality that I had, I would feel that was an enrichment actually. It was a, it was a new thing brought to my it was a growth of my reality. But I don't do that. If something challenges me, I, I resist it fiercely, and I want to argue with them, and I say, my reality is right, and yours is wrong. You follow me? So we're looking at the anchor of that sense of absoluteness of our logically, clearly, merely relational reality, which we absolutize, which we think is open. Each of us thinks we're the real one. You see, and that's the source of our problem, according to this analysis. But but when we hear that, if we don't do the practice that we're doing, now where we feel a little stuck, we should be feeling, we're not feeling stuck, we're not necessarily doing it right. Um, we don't do that when we hear, oh, relativity, we say, oh, sure, well, yeah, I'm trying to figure that, yeah, relativity, we know everything's relative, we're relative, sure, we know that. We have neighbors, we're relatives, we have friends, children, we're relatives, we know that. But what, what, what are we going to talk about? What, what could he have been thinking? What have all these people who think it's some great revelatory thing been thinking? You see, because we think we don't have, as I say, that's why when you're falling asleep on that one, sure, I'm all relational, you know, oh gee, I wasn't really that right. When you're reading the memory, then just think about somebody coming up right now and stamping on your toe. Then the dentist rises up like, how dare you do that? Why did you do that to me? I, I didn't deserve that. How could that happen? Right? Then you realize that there's a gut thing in there. It's a life and death absolute thing. Do you know what I mean? It gets cause of war and violence. Actually, fear of death. It's that sense of absoluteness. Thank you.